Rusti is a national dish of Switzerland, particularly German-speaking Switzerland. It's a breakfast, it's a side dish, it's just a potato pancake. Potatoes, salt, fat, that's it. But there are so many slight differences in technique people use, and right now I'm going to try almost all of them. This is Rusti eight slightly different ways. Number one, parboiled. This method seems to have particular traditional cred in Switzerland. Boil the potatoes until they've softened a bit on the inside, but they're still going to be firm enough that you can grate them later. I can sink my knife in there, but they still resist a fair bit. I think if I cook them any farther than that, they're just going to crumble into mash when I grate them. A lot of recipes tell you to chill them overnight in the fridge before you grate them, which is exactly what I did. Now, every traditional recipe I've seen tells you to peel the potatoes, and I don't care. People should eat more potato skin. It's the most nutritious part of the potato, and if you're using a variety with thin skin, you probably won't even notice it in there. There is zero point in peeling these Yukon gold potatoes I'm using. Large holes on a box grater. Now, people commonly squeeze out some of the excess water after they've grated. Pretty standard, like American-style hash brown technique, but when you parboil the potatoes, there really isn't that much to squeeze out. Cooking them dried them out, even though we used a wet heat method. I'll sprinkle some salt on there and toss. Raw weight on these potatoes was about one pound, 454 grams for a small rushti. That's an eight inch, 20 centimeter diameter nonstick, real small. For fat, I'm using clarified butter, but you could use anything. Just be generous with it if you want really golden surface on this. In go the potatoes, I'll push them into a nice even layer. And then a small one like this will probably take 10 minutes on side A, medium medium low heat. You need the whole cake to cook to the point where it kind of melts into itself and it's solid enough to flip. The danger is usually that you'll overcook the bottom before it's ready to flip, so be conservative with the heat. I'll flip by just covering it and then turning it out. Not bad. Maybe a little more fat in the pan, then slider back in to brown side B. You can kind of set that round shape by just swishing it around in the pan. Just cook until the other side is golden and the whole thing feels reasonably solid. I gave it maybe eight minutes on that second side and I'll turn it out to a cooling rack so it can steam out a bit before I cut it. You'll get cleaner slices if you really let it cool. I should have let this cool a little bit more. And there it is, let's taste. Pretty nice. I like the slightly fluffy texture it has in the center from the parboiling. It's just on the verge of becoming mashed potatoes. Nice. Okay, rushti number two, not parboiled. Totally raw potatoes. As I grate them, they feel much wetter. And now when I go to squeeze out the water, wow, so much is coming out. I'm not even squeezing that hard. Big difference from the parboiled potatoes. I think if you spread them out, it's much easier to eyeball the salt. Even so, that was probably a little too much salt there. Toss to combine, plenty of clarified butter in the pan, and I'll cook these as before. So far, this is a lot easier than the parboiled method because I didn't have to parboil them and then wait overnight. It's starting to feel solid enough to flip, give a peek on the bottom. Uh-oh, I think this is going to be too dark. Yeah, a little too dark. I think the residue of starchy water on these pieces browns very easily. I'll be a little more conservative with my heat on side B. Tidy up the shape. 15 to 20 minutes of total cook time, ah, much nicer on that side. And it feels crispier than the first one. Again, I think because of that starchy residue. As Chef John would say, fork don't lie. Ooh, it's cutting easier too. Very, very crispy. Hey, I hope everybody who bought one is enjoying the custom Adam Ragusea chef knife. You know, we shipped the initial production run of these with the sponsor of this video, ShipStation. When you're running your own little business like I am, your attention is constantly diverted. You're juggling a million balls and you might not even notice the ones you drop. If you sell things on the internet, ShipStation is here to help. It works with all of your storefronts, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, wherever your customers place their orders, ShipStation sucks them all up so you can see them in one single interface. From here, you can easily compare carriers, rates, delivery times, and you can get deeply discounted rates that the carriers normally reserve for the giant retailers. And more than 100,000 e-commerce sellers like me already use ShipStation in the United States. States, the UK, Canada, Australia too. Make ship happen and get back to doing what you actually like to do when it comes to running your business.
Sign up for a free 60-day trial at ShipStation.com slash Ragusea. That's two whole free months of shipping made quick and painless. ShipStation.com slash Ragusea. That's in the description. Thank you, ShipStation. So, Roosty number two, not parboiled, is better on the outside, I think. But I'm not wild about the inside. It's a little slimy in the center. Again, I think from that wet, starchy residue. We can try to address that with Roosty number three, rinsed, not parboiled. Again, raw potatoes, grate them up, and then I'll grab a bowl of cool tap water. Hot water might gelatinize the starch, make it all gummy. Wow, you can see how much free starch is washing off the surface of the shreds. I'm actually going to drain that in the sink and then rinse it again in some fresh water. Much cleaner now. I didn't invent this, by the way. Lots of recipes tell you to wash off that free starch. Squeeze the water out, sprinkle on some salt, toss. Wow, these feel so different. Almost like coarse hair. Very clean and separate shreds. I'm concerned that they won't bind together as they cook. That starch glue probably functioned as a binder in our last one. Indeed, after about 10 minutes, that's feeling too loose to flip. I'll give it a few more minutes to kind of melt together, but now, yep, I think I burned it. I guess if you're going to wash off the starch, you got to be even more conservative with the heat. Give it plenty of time to cook together before the surface burns. I'll give it medium-low heat on side B. Eh, much nicer there. Not as crispy, though. Again, I think that starch goo we washed away was a big part of why we got such a nice crispy surface last time, though this is not bad. Give it a taste. Yeah, I think I prefer the interior texture on this one. It's not slimy, again, because we washed these shreds. I think there's a way we can get the best of both worlds. But first, with Rusty number four, I want to try cutting the potatoes into matchsticks rather than grating them. I've seen fancy chef people do this. They say these longer pieces kind of wrap around each other and hold the cake together better. Plus, it probably looks nicer. I can already tell you I do not have the knife skills to get these as skinny as they need to be because the pieces are bigger they have less surface area, so these are bleeding less water, which is bad. We need to dry them out a bit, and I can't squeeze anything out of them, so we're going to need some chemical pressure. I'll salt these and then let them sit for like a half hour. Now the salt has drawn out a fair bit of water, and I can squeeze these pretty dry. In the pan they go. They really feel like noodles now. It's weird. And I'm turning the heat down because I can already predict this is going to need some extra time. The pieces are bigger. It's going to take longer for them to all cook into each other and get this solid enough to flip. And I still burned it. Nice. I'll do a better job on side B. Yeah, this is not working. It's like a pile of worms, not a cake. If you've got ninja knife skills or if you've got a mandolin slicer, maybe you can get these into the super fine matchsticks required, but nah, I'm going back to the grater. Roosty number five, grated, rinsed, and baked. I'm going to rinse these in some clean water, but I'm not going to rinse them as thoroughly as I did before. There's really no point. A quick dip gets most of that free starch off, and I'm not sure I want to get it all off anyway. Squeeze it dry, season in the pan, and this time I'm just going to worry about browning the bottom. That's all. After like five minutes, the bottom looks good, and I'll transfer this to the oven. 350 Fahrenheit, 180C, maybe 10 minutes. This gives us plenty of time to cook down the potatoes, make them hold together, even without that free starch glue we washed away. And in the oven, there's much less risk of burning the bottom. Bottom looks perfect. A little bit more butter in there to brown the flip side. Again, I'm just going to worry about browning the bottom. The interior is basically cooked. I could call this done, but for some extra textural contrast, I'll throw that whole rack back into the oven to crisp up the outside and push the inside a little closer to mashed potato territory. My convection fan is on, by the way. Let's give that a shot. Probably my favorite one so far. Pretty crispy on the outside and not at all slimy on the inside. Good. Rusty number six, rinsed, greased, and baked. This is going to be the same as the last one, except after I get my shreds rinsed and dried, I will toss them with a little bit of my clarified butter along with the salt. Lots of recipes tell you to spread some fat through the pieces. No doubt this will help the cake hold together and to cook faster. I will put a little less fat into the pan to compensate. Don't want this too greasy. Brown the first side, transfer to the oven until it feels solid enough to flip. Brown the other side, optionally return it to the oven on the rack for extra crisping. And I don't think I like that very much. The fat on the inside just makes the whole thing super greasy. Not a fan. 
One more variable I want to test, rusty number seven, mealy potatoes or baking potatoes. These are russets, and these I will peel. These have very thick, cardboardy skins. The skins crisp up really great, but the wet bits of skin in the interior would be kind of gross. Up to this point, I've been using Yukon Golds, which are an amazing variety that we have here in the United States. It's halfway between a waxy potato and a mealy potato. Waxy potatoes hold their shape when cooked, mealy potatoes don't, and I want to try mealy potatoes. Rinse, squeeze, season, brown, bake, flip, brown, bake again. And if you were to use these more floury potatoes, I think you'd want to cook them a little bit less. The interior is straight mashed potatoes. They've totally fallen apart inside. There was no point in grating these. I could have just fried some mashed potato cakes, which is a thing that I do sometimes. Okay, I think I'm ready for my final draft, rushti number eight. I'm going to do a much bigger one now, three pounds of potatoes, 1.4 kilos. I'm using a mixture of russets and Yukon golds because that's all I have left. Rinse, squeeze, season, and this time I'll use my 10 inch, 25 centimeter cast iron skillet. Plenty of clarified butter in there. Cast iron is not as nonstick as Teflon is. Get all that in there, cook until things are looking golden on the bottom, transfer to the oven, probably for 20 minutes this time. There's just a lot more mass in there. Feels plenty solid enough to flip. I'll shake this really hard to make sure it's going to release when I flip. Cast iron is not as nonstick as Teflon. Wow, really nice color on that. Slider back in, brown the bottom, another good five minutes at least. Turn her out, and again, that's probably good enough, but I will put the rack back in the oven for a final crisping. The oven is already hot, so might as well. Turn it out, let it cool. The thicker the rushti, the harder it is to get really clean slices. The crispy crust kind of caves in on the soft interior. If you want really clean slices, do a thin one. Again, people eat these with eggs or as a starch accompaniment to a stew. I'm just going to garnish with sour cream and dill and call it a day. You know, people have asked me if I might show my whole recipe development process, and there, I just did. But honestly, Every version I just tried right now was pretty good, and the differences between them were not enormous. So, you know, cook your potatoes however you want. It'll probably be fine. <laughs> 